Yo, what's going on everybody? It's Tuesday, September 20th. Uh, tomorrow is the conclusion of the Fed meeting and they're going to raise rates by 75 basis points. At least that's what the markets are forecasting right now. And Powell, as we all know, he just does whatever the market uh, says he should do. So 75 basis points. But one thing I saw today, which was interesting, was that the um, rate hike probabilities for November, that jumped up to a 75 basis point increase. And the December now jumped up to a 50. So both of those were up. Okay. For sure, December is up because it was hanging in there at a 25 basis point uh, increase. Uh, but... I think November was a 50 basis point, at least that's what the futures were pricing in, but now it's 75. Anyway, so I've been, oh, here's the other thing I want to say. Now, for those of you who have followed me for a while, and this goes way back, but even if you kind of have come on board as a recent follower, you know that one of the things that yours truly has been telling you, telling everyone, really, I, you know, many times I posted this on my Twitter account. By the way, if you don't follow me on Twitter, please do. It's Twitter slash Mike Norman. I said that because the Fed uh, pays interest on reserves, okay, and this was something that went into effect in 2008, when we were back in the financial crash in 2008, Bernanke asked uh, Congress for authorization for the Fed to pay interest on reserves directly. Prior to 2008, you know, for the whole history before that, the Treasury, U.S. Treasury, paid interest on reserves. And Bernanke said, oh, let us do it. You know, it's going to give us a better tool to manage interest rates, which is BS. It's, gar it's garbage. It's nonsense. But anyway, ever since then, 2008, I said there's going to come a time, okay, when the Fed's going to run into trouble because they got to pay interest uh, out of their own earnings. And their earnings are, you know, that's their portfolio, their, their securities and other investments that they hold. It's, it's basically the interest that they earn from that. And they earn about a hundred billion a year, to, and they remit that to the treasury every year, except for, you know, their operating expense, which is about three, four billion. And I said, you know, if you look at the assets that the Fed has, and um, you know what it earns every year, you could basically calculate its rate of return. It was like two and a half percent. And I said, once they go over two and a half percent on interest uh, on their rate hikes. They're out of money, basically, okay? And I said this a long time ago. I've been saying this a long time ago. I also said it, it probably doesn't have any effect on their uh, con conduct of monetary policy. But, <laughs> you know, they're going to run with negative cash flow. They're going to run with, with negative equity. And they're going to have nothing to remit to the Treasury at the end of the year. I, I thought that, uh, and I think that's going to raise eyebrows among uh, members of Congress. So anyway, others are finally starting to catch on. So you know, when you come here to my channel and you listen to me, you get everything like way before everybody else. You get You get the macro picture before everybody else. You get you know, deficit surplus before everyone else. You get all these, um, you know, the banking stuff, everything before everybody else. So this was way, way before everybody else. But I saw some posts on, on Twitter today about how the, the Fed is now taking an $850 billion um, unrealized loss. You know, and it it's all involves this, them paying interest. They're not going to have anything to remit to the Treasury. So yeah, that's happening, and I said that was going to happen. And the more they raise interest rates, the more they're going to have to pay, and the, the deeper the hole they're going to dig for themselves. Now again, I don't think this is going to have any impact on them conducting monetary policy, although I'm wondering, like at the meeting, are these guys talking about this stuff? Like, hey, you know, Jerome, uh, we don't have the money, basically, to pay interest. I mean, we can you know, they, they could just, you know, 
credit bank accounts, credit, you know, till, till infinity, basically. But we're not going to have money to pay uh, to the Treasury. So maybe Congress is going to start asking some questions. I don't know. I'm not on the inside. I'm not a fly on the wall. I wish I was. But, I, you know, I wouldn't put a, you know, knowing these guys and how they operate and how clueless they, they often seem to me anyway, uh, like with this whole Fed rate hike thing, not not even understanding or looking. Look at countries like Turkey. Look at countries like Argentina. You know, look at countries like Brazil who've been raising interest rates and inflation just keeps going up. But anyway, I digress. So that that came to light. All right. The other thing is that um, man, this tax train. Uh, you know, I thought it'd be over by now. We had another, yesterday was a, a 12 billion uh, drain. So now the total drain for September is 144 billion. A hundred, and now I thought, man, we went from a 92 billion government deficit. And remember, deficit is good. That, that equates to a net addition to the financial balances of the economy, right? That's filling up the swimming pool. Now the government has a 44 billion surplus and it basically happened in a week. I mean, you talk about draining out the swimming pool. I mean, this was this was a vacuum cleaner. This was a suction. I, I didn't even think it was going to be this big. I, I thought 110, 120, we're at 144 billion already. So it's no surprise that the market can't get up off the floor. I mean, I have to say, I was, was kind of like impressed with the market that, you know, we didn't make new lows. I mean, even today, we tested that uh, the last three days, the lows of the last three days, and we popped off that again. Yesterday, I said, it looks like the market is short, and I still think so. But, man, th these tax trains have just been brutal, brutal. I mean, we really need a tax cut or an increase in spending right now if the economy is going to develop any upside momentum. I mean, you know, and the problem is that Biden's going to be bragging about this. He's going to be saying, look, we got a sur we ran a surplus in September. We, we cut the deficit. I mean, it's it's really, really bludgeoning the economy. Uh, but the, again, it all it all. Um, you know, ties in with, with these false understandings of how the monetary system functions, how the government, you know, people think the government needs to save its money. And I said yesterday, the only way it can do that is by taking the money away from us. So that's what's going on. Uh, brutal tax drain, you know, seven business days, we flipped from a 92 billion uh, government deficit. That remember, that's adding 92 billion into the swimming pool to sucking out 92 billion plus another 50 billion, 144 billion. Unbelievable. I'm sorry, 44 billion. Yeah. So we sucked out the um, the, the 92 billion, and then we sucked out another 44 billion. Um, so it's not a surprise you know, that the market is having trouble right here. I mean, it's no, really, you know, when you understand it, you know, when you're draining everybody's bank account, uh, what do you expect? Now, I did a video a couple of weeks ago about how, man, I, I feel like leaving this business because, you know, I've been in it a long time. And let me just say, I, I like you know, managing my por portfolio. I like the stock market. Like me personally, when things are going down, I I'm not rattled. Uh, if I get rattled or if I sound frustrated or if I, you know, get um, annoyed, it's because I feel bad for people. I know a lot of people, you know, they get scared, they get frightened. I try to help with information. I try to help with knowledge. But at the same time, I, I, you know, I feel for them. And when it goes down and, you know, I have subscribers and stuff like that. And, you know, they, they uh, you know, I get feedback. And, um, 
I feel for them. It's not just me operating in a vacuum. I'm trying to help people. And I know that when these things happen, it's scary and they get frightened. And, uh, you know, it, it's hard for a lot of people to look at what's going on and stay calm and have perspective. And, you know, that's understandable. But the thing that really gets me is, you know, when you read or listen to um, financial or economic or market commentary and you see it you know we get bombarded by it we you got CNBC you got Fox Business you got the, the the Twitterverse and all that stuff I mean the amount of crap the amount of garbage and stupidity that that permeates out there it's just like I mean it blows my mind that's what gets me really really angry like if this was any other industry Okay, if this was like uh, healthcare or medicine, you know, this, this is malpractice to a degree that is unimaginable. I mean, people saying things that are completely, completely, you know, not even backward, but just utter and sheer nonsense and dangerous to people. It's, it's indoctrinating people, uh, you know, with ideas that are false and erroneous and detrimental and dangerous dangerous to their financial well-being one of the things this this comment or these comments that I'm, I'm gonna tell you now it's it's I mean this is more bizarre than dangerous but I mean I've seen in the last couple of days a lot of commentary especially like on Twitter about you know, how interest rates are going to cause the government to have to pay more interest. And, you know, yeah, I mean, but that is being uh, expressed in this, you know, dire and terrible uh, framing when, you know, when you sit back and you understand that the payment of interest is fiscally exactly the same thing as sending out checks to people. Now, of course, it may be a different cohort of people, but again, that's, that's going into the economy. But what's fascinating or frustrating about all this is that, and I, you know, I'm not a psychologist. I don't know why this is. But people never consider or endeavor to understand the full picture. I mean, they're literally saying, look at this terrible thing that's going on. Interest payments by the government will have to go up. Yes, payments to people, to institutions, to pension funds, to, you know, investors. It's the same exact thing as sending out checks. No one considers the full understanding. Nobody tries to endeavor to, to grasp the full understanding. This is frustrating. I also saw somebody post something on Twitter and he, he poses himself as, um, you know, kind of like an expert. This guy is widely, widely followed. I'm not going to say who it is, but... Um, he says he hopes that the Fed tomorrow is going to lower the interest rate on its reverse repo facility because it want it, it's it would like to get rid of that cash he said <laughs> like the you know uh, which would force the banks to raise their interest rate to attract that cash I mean, the thing was so convoluted, it's unbelievable. First of all, does he understand the reason why the reverse repo facility was created in the first place? Because the banks didn't want the cash. They couldn't hold the cash. It was an asset that either required more capital, as a matter of fact, Jamie Dimon today came out and said, look, these capital, you know, we're in a situation we got to keep raising capital is because exactly because of this predicament that the Fed created, they had to create the reverse repo facility so that the banks were able to 
you know, move that cash off their books. That's number one. So he's like saying, well, I hope the Fed lowers the interest rate on the reserve, uh, reverse repo so that the cash goes back to the banks. They don't want it. They can't use it, okay, because there's too much in the system right now. Fed literally had to create a new vehicle just to move that cash off, number one. Number two, aren't we in this environment that everybody's freaking out because the Fed is raising interest rates? And he's saying, I hope tomorrow they lower the rate on the reverse repo. Like, they're not lowering any rates right now. This is what everybody is in this psychosis and delusion over with the whole freaking rate rise thing. But the point I'm making, the main point I'm making is that, and you really, folks, you got to understand that, that the level of malpractice and junk, just pure junk, I mean, it's dangerous to your financial well being. You got to stop, and I'm not saying you guys listen to this stuff. I'm just saying, in general, I just wish, you know, how, how they. Um, you know how they censor people on the you know they do it for saying something if you say something like uh, I don't know you know uh, pro-Russia you're blocked you're taken off right I mean it, I, I, it's very dangerous this financial stuff that this, this lack of understanding this malpractice that goes on constantly constantly and I'm not just talking about these people who are basically you know, amateurs. I mean, this goes on with the pros too. I mean, you have Janet Yellen. I, this is the reason that this is what triggered me to do that video a couple of weeks ago. I think Janet Yellen, when she said, we got to tax rich people to ensure the stable finances of the government. And I said, well, look, if you want to tax rich people, that's fine. But it's the argument is not because you need to do that to ensure the stable finances of the government. You might want to do that to claw back some of the outsized fiscal gains that they've had over the last 30 or 40 years that came at the expense of working people and kind of let, you know, bring the playing field back into a more uh, uh, level alignment. You know, it's never going to be level, but just like narrow that gigantic uh, wealth gap a little bit, a little bit. Yes, if you want to use that as a justification, that's a valid, I think anyway, that's a valid and a rational justification. But for the Secretary of the Treasury to say something like that, I mean, if you understand, and I, you know, all of you right now who have been following me for you know, any length of time, a couple of weeks, you're more educated than that. You, you have a higher level of understanding than that. You would never say something like that. I'm sure if you got into an argument or a discussion uh, with a colleague or a friend, you'd be able to at least, you know, impart some basic uh, understanding to them just from, you know, what you learned over here. But, but this is these, we're talking about people at the top level of policy, at the top, top level of policy. So yeah, it's hard and yeah, it's frustrating because when you get people like that who literally have their hands on the controls and they're saying things like that and, and you understand that they're so off base and they're so wrong, but yet they're the ones driving the, you know, they're driving the bus. And, you know, the bus is careening down this narrow mountain cliff road without any guardrails. It's hard, man. It's really, really hard. Anyway, <laughs> so that's where we are, man. Uh, yeah, so that's it. So tomorrow, look, the good news is, if there is any, tomorrow is the 21st. It's actually a Social Security payment day. So we should finally get a positive net flow tomorrow, okay? It's not going to show up in the number. It'll show up in the numbers on Thursday. Uh, but tomorrow we have the Fed thing. So remember, usually on Social Security payment days, on those days or the day after we get a positive market. Personally, I would, if the, if the, the, the meeting, if the conclusion of the meeting triggers a sell-off, which it's very likely to do, and you want to trade it, I would buy into that sell-off. Because I, I think...
I think, I'm pretty sure we're past, you know, we've reached the point where these crazy tax drains, they're finally coming to an end. Tomorrow's going to be a positive flow day with that Social Security payment. So hopefully, what do we have? Tomorrow's a, the 21st, uh, not, what, well, not nine more business days, but we got, so that would be uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and uh, Monday, Tuesday, we got like till next Friday, so five days, we got eight days, eight business days of positive flow, hopefully. So, you know, we could recover, I don't know, like 40, maybe 40 billion or something of that 140 billion that um, maybe a little bit less. But we will recover some, so things should start looking a little bit better. But, you know, the, the monitor is zombies. <laughs> They're going to be selling tomorrow. You know that for sure. Anyway, that's it for today, folks. All right, stay strong. See you tomorrow. Bye.